Hey everyone, um, welcome to the first OUSA Candidates Forum for the 2017 Executive Elections. Oh, yeah, can, it, can everyone hear me or do I need to be a bit louder? Stand up. Hello. Um, so, we're going to start with the first approximately half an hour for the welfare candidates uh, and then the second block of candidates will be the sole VP of finance candidate and the two education candidates. Um, the, what the broad structure will be they will all get a three minute spell at the start, then I'll start asking some questions about their priorities or perceived weaknesses and at that, at that point I'll ask for any questions from the floor. Uh, so feel free to chip in. Um, but I would also ask if you, like, maybe are not deliberately here just to be uh, mindful of noise and stuff um, because it is quite nerve wracking. Introduce themselves and so, um, clap my hands at three minutes, unless we've got a bell, Donna. Uh, you not to have a bell okay, I'll minutes. just clap my hands at, at three minutes when your time's up. So if we just go, go yeah, from. Reach more students at a lower price. Um, I want to expand cuddle fixes to reduce exam stress because I know how a uh, walking bus, you know, that'll be uh, started in O week and if successful to continue through the year to make sure that students are safe from, you know, harassment and assault and if you're just feeling unsafe going home from, from town. I also want to make sure to collaborate with other uh, uni groups so to make sure that uh, we are all represented fully, evenly and yeah, just to Make sure that everyone is safe and happy at uni. Thank you so much. Thank you much, Ed. I don't have to speak for a minute, so just feel free to stop beforehand. So I decided to run for a position on the OUSA exit because in my three years at uni, I've seen how much OUSA or how much OUSA impacts students and has a lot to improve the quality of life for all students. And so I chose to be welfare officer, to run for welfare officer specifically, because I care about student welfare above any other issue. And um, I want to make sure that OUSA does everything that it can to make sure that students are happy and healthy and comfortable at uni because I think they all have the right to do that. And I'm not running just to write something on my CV. I'm running because I passionately believe in the welfare of Otago students. And that's why I believe I'm best for the position. Um, I'm hardworking and I'm good at working with others and I will be completely dedicated to working with the rest of the exec to improve student well-being and make Otago a better place. Um, so I have a few ideas and ways that I'll make sure that that happens. And I'm always willing to listen to more ideas and take suggestions from anyone. Um, so first, I'll start a cloakroom near the Octagon, which will be linked to a charity. Second, I'll fight for better support for mental and physical health. Third, I'll push for exa exam timetables to be released earlier. And then finally, I'll continue and improve things like the Cuddle Fix, Thursdays in Black, and the university's Mental Health and Wellness Day, and other things like that. So the cloakroom near the Octagon will be the biggest change that I'll put through. Um, as you probably know, there's currently nowhere to put coats in town. So when you go out to town in the middle of winter, when it's freezing, you don't have a lot of options. You can leave your coat somewhere, or you can carry it with you, or you could just not go out at all. Um, but those aren't really good enough options. And so the cloakroom um, would operate on Thursday and Saturday nights in the winter near the Octagon. And it would be inexpensive, about 50 cents to a dollar to leave. We run by a group of volunteers for OUSA. Oh, okay, sorry. Um, well, yeah, I don't have time to go into all my other ideas, but thanks for listening. Hi, my name is Danielle, and I'm a third-year pharmacy student. 
So recently I'm actually involved as the Welfare Officer of ATOM, which is the Science Students Association. And through ATOM I've been doing quite a bit already with trying to implement welfare policies and find out what is available in terms of helping students with mental health in particular. So we're currently putting through a lot of surveys and trying to find out ways that we can make the university a better place. The main reason I want to run for Welfare Officer for OUSA is so that I can actually expand my reach. It's all very well doing things just for science students. I mean broader interests that all have similar underlying issues. So the main policies that I hope to put in place should I be elected are first of all a database which would be part of a website. So with this, students can answer a series of questions or click a series of boxes. And this will allow them to be directed to the support service that's going to most suit their needs. There's quite a few support services around the university, but there's often a lack of awareness or knowledge of the students as to just how much they can be accessed for, in, for an example, the disability services. Many people in order to ensure students are aware of them and able to access them is one of the most important things that a welfare officer can do. Alongside this, flatting people who, while we were at home, were too busy to help out in the kitchen and help with cooking. When I first went flatting, I had no idea how to cook. I had no idea what the basic things you needed in a flat kitchen were. So what, part of what we're hoping to do is initiate a small cookbook, which just tells you how to do the most basic meals, tells you what the basic list for the first grocery shop should be, and visiting flats, checking, short, checking that people are okay and if there's anything that we can help with, and giving out a flatting pack, which is going to A, help OUSA presence within the student community, and B, ensure that students are getting the most out of their flatting experiences. Thank you for listening. Um, to do with mental health? 
Um, yeah, definitely. I think mental health is a really big issue at uni with lots of students dealing with it and feeling alone. And I think that the uni and OUSA needs to do more to address that. Um, I'm not convinced that, um, but I know that I will make a change and I will push for better awareness among students that um, making students aware that lots of students are going through this and making sure that people don't feel alone. Cool, thank you. Um, next question is for um, Danielle. Danielle, you mentioned wanting to set up a self-help website or a website which directs students to a range of services. I'm just wondering, given there is an OUSA website already, um, what's going to be different about this website or why will people uh, go to it more often than the OUSA website? What I've currently seen, I actually did quite a bit of research before coming up with this idea because this was initially thought about through Atom until we realised it needed a broader reach, is that yes, there is a list of all the support services available on the OUSA website. The problem is they don't often encompass everything that is available through that service. And sometimes it can be very, very difficult to actually troll through everything to try and find out what you actually need. This database or website would be more about trying to make the services more accessible and ensuring that the correct one is selected by the student which minimises the need to go and talk to a whole heap of different people when quite often opening up can actually be one of the most difficult things. And um, look, I'm, Hi. Um, I'm currently the um, communications officer for Tele 2006. My question, thank you very much, um, it's been really interesting listening to um, some of the issues, but what I really wanted to ask was what was your, what would be your main issue that you feel as a welfare officer is highly important for you? What's your goal and what are your strategies? Just a couple of strategies or one good strategy for reaching that goal at the end of the year or during the year. Well, I think it's really hard to say just what my main issue would be um, in terms of improving student well-being because I think improving student well-being as a whole has a lot of different layers to it and there are lots of different things that I would need to do. But I think um, the mental and physical health is a big thing and I think that that would be my main priority. Um, however, also starting the cloakroom um, as a practical measure um, So in terms of what the major issue is, quite often it can be mental health, which is a very, very multifaceted issue. So the whole idea is targeting issues in particular, which can be a cause for mental distress. So this can include flatting and the poor living conditions and offering ways which this can be remedied, people who you can talk to, for example, the Curtain Bank, which was implemented this year, warmth. It's about ensuring the correct su support services are available and that students are aware of these and how, and how they can actually be helped. It's ensuring that there is transparency around the university fees, knowing who they can talk to if they're under financial hardship. For example, the support service, the OUSA support building, which does have a hardship fund for students who are really struggling and just ensuring that everyone knows what's available and making sure that it is readily available for the students. Cool, okay. okay. So we were just... My apologies. Hi, thanks for your question. Um, I'd have to agree, I think that probably the most prominent issue that is affecting students as a whole is mental health. Um, I think especially in New Zealand, we need much more help, and especially for students. It's a lot of people just don't know where to get the support and how to get the support. I think we need to start a discussion about it. I know there's still a lot of stigma attached to mental health um, and I think that it's really important to con especially continue the initiatives that are already in place. I know that there's wellness week but a lot of students just aren't aware of in regards to this and I think it is really important to continue this discussion and make sure that students feel comfortable with approaching the exec with ideas that they have and things that they think
you just want to keep the mic and you can go first. Um, so candidates just have one minute uh, for a closing statement um, to say whatever they want. So take away Mary. Okay, I've, been, I've had a really good time coming to the questions today. Um, I'm really passionate about this. I think that it's such an important part of our life as a student. I enjoyed my time being a student and I think it's time to give back to um, everyone who is a student as well. Um, I think it's a job and I think that I am really student and as I said I'm extremely passionate about it and I would love your votes and I'd also love it if you guys could come and talk to me about any issues you might have or any questions. Thank you so much for all coming. what I said at the start, um, especially about my main policy ideas. Um, so I'm running for welfare officer because I really care about improving student well-being. Um, I'll work hard with the rest of the exec to make sure that this happens. And so first I'll start a cloakroom near the octagon. Um, this will improve student well-being and it will raise money for charity at the same time, which I don't think I really had time to explain, but yeah. And um, I'll also fight for better support for physical health and specifically mental health, like I was saying. Um, mental health is a huge issue among students and OUSA needs someone who will really take it seriously and push for change. Um, and I'll also push to make sure that exam timetables are released earlier. When timetables are released needlessly late, this um, means students aren't able to make plans So I don't have time to comment more. I thought it was two minutes, sorry. No, sorry, just but, one. Yeah, okay. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please feel free to let me know. Thanks for listening. Please vote Eileen for welfare. So in conclusion, I believe I am a good candidate for welfare. I've had a lot of experience already trying to implement procedures, particularly for science students, which I hope to broaden my range. And along with my personal policy, if I ran, if I did get accepted for wealth start, there's also the policies which are part of our ticket, which are more of a collaborative approach. So there is the food truck, and that has been mentioned today. The main idea with that is ensuring safety at night. And as well as that, many students often struggle to get outside of North Dunedin. So part of what we would establish is a Dunedin Explorers Group, which means that you have the opportunity to university each day, which can contribute to mental issues. Thank you very much for your time. Cool. Thank you for all the I hope that was somewhat uh, enlightening. Yourself. Uh, so, good work. Um, I mean, if the next candidates can pretty much come to the stage, we'll have a short, like, two minute break, but um, we should probably get on with it as soon as possible. Is um, David Wang here? Does anyone know David? Okay, we'll, we'll give him like one minute. Um, so if he's not here by then, we'll just get underway.
Hey, um, welcome to the forum for Vice President, Education Officer and Finance Officer. Um, we are missing one of the Education Officer candidates, David Wang. Um, so if he joins us, he can just uh, join in at the point at which we are when he arrives. Um, but without further ado, um, I'd like to give each candidate um, three minutes to um, introduce themselves and tell us who they are. Um, I will, I'll just sort of raise my hand and there's 10 seconds to go so you can see before I ring the bell. Okay, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'd like to just I'd like to just say thank you all for coming. I know one of the goals of the executive has been to engage more with people, with students, and by you all being here today, we're already working together to do this, so thank you very much. So, I think OUSA is a great organisation, right? I got here in Dunedin, and I knew basically nothing about this city, or except that it was cold. I knew it was cold. And I got here, and I... Um, I got my hands on one of the magazines that has all the information about the clubs, the societies, and the classes. I used that and I got out and got involved in things. I, I made friends at the, at the events that sprawled over O-Week. And these, these things, OSA, OUSA is at the heart of these initiatives. It's important that we keep these initiatives up. So, what I think makes, o, I think OUSA, what makes OUSA shine though, more importantly, is the passion that drives the organisation. Now this passion doesn't just come from past executive members or the staff involved, it comes from the students, the students that make Dunedin a great city. It stems from the very, the very same source that gives Dunedin its national reputation and our university the reputation for one of the best universities in New Zealand. It's the people here with their laid back, all in this together attitude that gives our university and more importantly our association such a great reputation, and it gives us something that Auckland, Victoria, or no other university in New Zealand will ever have. The student atmosphere in Dunedin is what I'm talking about, and it's important that we, as an association, continue to represent students in a way that reflects what this atmosphere really is. So, for the executive for 2017, I want to ensure that OUSA continues doing what it does best. And that's representing the students who make Dunedin such a great city. Our association is for all students, past, present and future. By building on the legacy of those executive members that come before us, we're going to benefit the students, to benefit the students for the future. Now, my personal policy is to do everything I can to guarantee that OUSA remains financially sustainable so that students in the future will get as much out of it as we do today. The executive elections are important so that you can decide who you want to be your leaders for next year. I want to put myself forward for the role of financial uh, officer on the OUSA executive so that I can continue to ensure that OUSA provides excellent services to students, provides opportunities, and that they will always be financially able to do so. Thank you. So, uh, Bryn, the welfare candidate, now has three minutes. Uh, hey guys. Uh, so sorry, 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 you're the education candidate. <laughs> hey guys, my name's Bryn. Um, I'm a third year law and economics student, and I'm the current welfare officer at RSA Executive. Um, part of what well, being welfare officer this year has been an absolutely brilliant experience. It's been, it's really just made me even more keen to, to come up with more ideas and find more ways to give back to the student body. Um, projects we've done this year, like Thursdays in Black, for recent art week, we've done with creating permanent art display for women's room and getting the, the whole idea of collective support to help support students. Um, working on free flu jabs and working on having the flu jab um, pilot system we've run, and we're still working on bringing about free flu jabs for all students next year. Um, I've provided uh, free curtains to all students that want them from the Student Support Centre. And we've got um, kitchenettes going in. Uh, we're going to be running a pilot later in this year. We've got a proposal in the Commerce Building. So um, to have the permanent kitchen and set up new developments. So it, it's, been a, it's been a crazy experience and it's, it's something that is very dynamic, but it's something that I think um, has highlighted a number of other issues to me that where I think OSA can improve and can help in other areas. 
Um, one of those things is my main policy is surrounding greater support for student executive um, groups, student faculty groups. So these are groups like SOULS, like the Med Student Association, like COMSA, like ATOM. These are the groups that are there on the ground talking to students um, in their specific areas. So these groups currently do a lot of good. They run a lot of very good events, they run a lot of very good support initiatives. But we think by offering them more support we can improve that even more. We've got groups like ATOM and groups like COMSA that are only coming into resurgence now this year. We want to see them as strong, stable groups that can help students for the years to come. So the support we want to offer them is help greater training for their executive, ideas on how to run events, ideas on goal setting and on university process. We want to help them in how they interact with the university, how they, how they, what meetings, who to talk to to actually get things done. The university is a hugely complicated um, network of different people and the, the, the more clear we can make that process, the better it will be. In turn, that helps us on the executive. It's more opinions back to the executive. It's, it's, it's very easy to get caught up in a bubble um, when you're there and not be aware of um, the problems at the ground level. But if we're there talking every week, every month with these, with these groups and getting them involved, we can know where the focus is that we need to put. Um, the other main focus I've got is towards the class rep system. A lot of this is developed out of the mental health issues I've noticed this year through my role as welfare officer. And one of the key things we've found is getting greater peer support towards students. Um, having a class rep system that works through Facebook and having Facebook groups set up for um, groups from the university, such as you have a, um, a group for a, a, a particular year in history or a particular year in geography, we have a Facebook group for all their pages. This will allow students in that group to form study groups, to know who's in their class, to talk to people, and to ask questions direct to the class rep that they know will then filter through. Um, yeah, that, those are the two main policies I want to achieve, and I'd like to have your vote this year. Thanks, Bryn, and now to uh, William, the VP candidate. Uh, kia ora, I'm William. I'm a third year pharmacy student at the School of Pharmacy. Um, I'm running alongside Hugh Baird for president because I believe Otago students deserve uh, strong and independent leadership. I'm the current recreation officer at ODSA and I've worked hard for our clubs and societies throughout the year. So we've established external grant support, uh, developed the clubs and societies innovation program, and we've uh, undertaken a policy review that will hopefully free up more money for clubs and societies for grants next year. I've also worked in collaboration with university staff in the Health Sciences Division. This has given me the experience and insight into the organisation to hit the ground running with you in 2016. Um, I'm running on a number of policies with you, uh, and I'll cover a few of these now. So one of them is more frequent rubbish collection in North Dunedin. So students uh, produce about three times as much waste as other Dunedin households, and the council collection doesn't reflect that. We believe that students need more frequent recycling collection, particularly for glass, to clear up our streets. Uh, we're also lobbying, we're going to lobby effectively to prevent rises in student living, or to, to get rises in student living costs um, through the government. We also want to lobby hard for extended library hours. So, current, so the, it's, it's one thing for OUSA to trial the library hours, but we think it's time for the university to step up and actually put those extended library hours in place itself. Um, so OUSA has spent too much time talking this year, and it's more action. Uh, we need to be staunch in our opinions and stand up for things like humanities cuts and a medical school being slandered during the hospital rebuild. Me and Hugh can provide the strong independent voice to do that. Thanks. like OUSA, 
But a lot of the core financial skills will uh, come over. So thank you. Cool. So the education officer role is a role that is very committee intensive. It's very um, university process intensive. So I think my key skills in that respect is why not my experience on the executive this year already. Um, it's been a massive learning curve. I'm only sort of getting an understanding now of how much of the things work and how to actually get substantive change through university. Um, much of the issues that we've been looking at, the wider issues that surround students, around ideas like computer-based examinations, around um, special considerations, stuff like that, are very policy-intensive ideas too. Being a law student, being um, aware of having re regular familiarity with reading policy, being involved this year on the OSA Executive and policy changes is stuff that is all very effective. Um, and again, I do think you can never encapsulate every skill a role needs, and that's why it's important, again, to be able to recognise when you need to listen to the various students and the various people that are aware of the, uh, the problems and what they need to have them solve. So. Uh, so the first and foremost responsibility of the Vice President is to ensure that the President has all the resources and support to undertake their own goals. Um, for me, this means ensuring that Hugh has the resources to be a strong, independent voice for students. Um, so my role as Recreation Officer this year meant that I sat on three university committees as well as the policy committee within OUSA. So that means I have an understanding of the OUSA as well as the university structure and what resources I would need, I'd be able to get for Hugh to lobby more effectively and to give the students a strong independent voice. Um, similarly, I've been involved as a Vice President of a club before as well as President of another club and I've managed communications for you and Youth Otago as well as the Cycling Club. So yeah, I think I have the skill set to support you as president this year. Cool. Well, I just uh, keep, keep the mic, Will. Um, so now I've just got some specific questions, and just to prelude this, um, Bryn and Will uh, are not running for the same position, but they're supporting different presidential candidates. So Bryn is uh, with Lark, and Will is with you, um, and is running for 20-hour positions and being current executive members they're arguably the sort of most other senior people on their presidential ticket. Um, Cody, are you uh, with anyone or you're just independent? Independent, okay, because I thought it'd be good to clear that up before we get out of the way. So starting with um, you, Will, um, in a way in your, your speech before and in your blurb, you are kind of critical of the exec in saying that OUSA needs to be stronger and more independent, but isn't this a bit cute because you, you are on OUSA at the moment? <laughs> Um, so, uh, yeah, I have been on the executive year this year, and I think I've learned a lot from the experience. In my role as a recreation officer, it's not really my responsibility to the lo lobby the university or take a stand on issues. That's primarily the president's responsibility, and I think this year OUSA has sat back a bit too much. When issues like the humanities cut cuts came up, we talked too much and we didn't take action, and I think the OUSA needs to sort of be more staunch in its opinions in that matter. I think we should have come out and said that we opposed the humanities cuts early. I think we need to have an opinion on these issues and spend less time talking and more time doing. So, what I'm interested to know though is were you active on this year's executive in advocating to say that OUSA should be more vocal on these issues or take more actions of protest? Um, I guess I did. There was an instance where an executive member went down to a rally in favour of the uh, in opposition to the humanities cuts and I was supportive of the executive uh, officers doing so, and I sort of defended him in that instance, but I guess I haven't been in a position where I could uh, lobby effectively. Um, yeah, in and in terms of the issue that cropped up earlier in the year, in terms of whether CCTV cameras should be on Hyde Street, are you supportive of CCTV cameras or opposed to them? I don't support CCTV cameras off campus. Okay, cool. I've got a question for Bryn. Um, Bryn, you're running on Lark's ticket, and as the education officer yourself, you're obviously responsible for advocating on education policies. Um, and like a lot of your promises relate to uh, like good initiatives, but I'm just wondering whether this plank of an OUSA food truck, do you think that is sufficient to communicate that you're going to be a strong advocate on big policy areas? Um, and if you have got other policy areas you're intending to advocate on, what are they? Um, part of the reason why we're leading with OSA Food Truck is to get more engagement in with the students and voting. It's, it's not, I guess, the thing we're doing. It is a way of getting out there and getting people interested in the voting process. It's a way of providing a service um, that will benefit students in terms of safety and the like. 
Um, in terms of wider policy stuff, we're very mindful, and again, this comes a lot from my experience in the executive this year, is that issues pop up all the time, and issues are not foreseeable, and particularly big issues such as humanities cuts. There's no way of knowing now what the big issues will be next year. What we can offer and what we are offering is an executive that will be out there talking to students, will be an executive out there talking to each other, and will be an executive that is going to try and get as much student opinion as it can, and from that form its opinion on where to go on the major issues. It, it's not a case of saying here and now, this is what we're going to do, because I don't know what the big issue is going to be um, 12 months from now. And are you for or against CCTV cameras in student areas? I'm against CCTV cameras if they are managed by the university and is under the university code of conduct. So if they're private, if they're installed by the landlords, that's okay then? Well, if, if it's seen as a council initiative or if something's done through their existing powers, I don't think it's something the university needs to encroach on more in student life. Cool. Uh, Cody, um, I'm just wondering, uh, as the finance officer, um, your views on, um, you know, how much do you think the executive should be spending on initiatives and what's your sort of plan for managing spending? by the executive. Okay, so we already, the executive already spends quite a bit of money in general. Um, I, I, I'm not looking to expand our reach too much. I, my, my main goal here is sustainability. That comes into one of the core values, uh, the strategic objectives that OUSA already has, to make sure that this organisation is going to last for future students, for future generations. And that doesn't mean just throwing money away. So as far as spending goes, Good policies are good ideas, but it's all on cost-benefit analysis. It's all on uh, what you get out of it versus what you're putting in, and there's there's no reason to just spend money for no reason. So, do you think you do you think you'll be strong enough to play the role of executive of the person who often has to say, say no to things? Yeah, I, I do think I will be. I'll be I'll be the person um, protecting the the books, the finances, making sure the money is there, and making sure there's going to be money there in the future. If we, when, when elections occur, just in general, when people start making um, political promises, when it actually comes down to it, not all those promises are going to be able to be fulfilled. And I'm, I'm not sitting here telling you that I want to do this and I want to do that. I'm sitting here and telling you that I want to make sure that future students are going to be able to get the same out of OUSA that we are today. And to do that, I'm, I'm completely prepared to say no to people. Okay. Um, if you the mic back to Brian. Um, What's, what's the need for the food bus? Do we, do we need a food truck? I mean, when I walk home, there's shops everywhere. Like, what, what, what's the shortage that we're trying to correct? We've seen a greater trend in Dunedin of student bars and student areas that students go to in town closing down, which has led to more and more students going to flat parties. Now, flat parties themselves are largely unregulated, and what happens on the street is um, a, a cause of concern for the wider Dunedin community. So we've seen issues this year, obviously, around um, sexual harassment and stuff like that happening. We've seen issues around the continual issue around broken glass. This is about trying to find a, a safe point within that so that we can try to make that environment a bit better. It's about trying to see that um, core things which students have. You're not going to be able to stop students drinking, nor, the, nor should we. But the support service in terms of having a truck set up, having Campus Watch being there available, having free water, having food, having people able to mingle in an area that is safe and is, is happy and is fun. I think there is a need, because I do think there are a number of students now that we've heard from the walking bus idea from the um, welfare candidates earlier, that there are a number of students that are not feeling safe walking home at the night. And we need to do everything we can to ensure every student feels like they can spend their time studying at the library on Thursday night and still get home safely without being harassed. We think this is a very small way of able to do that. So I, I'm just trying to picture how this works. Is this, is this like a portable food truck slash bar where people are partying and then they're going to be moved home. How, how do you see it working in practice? We see this as much like any other conventional food truck you see parked out on the museum reserve. It's certainly it's mobile, it's, it's able to move around, we don't see it staying in one place. Um, this is something we can see you can park up on Castle Street, park up on Hyde Street, Lee Street, Dundas. It moves around based um, on where the particular need is. Um, it's, it's a mobile way of providing services to students, and we would certainly intend to fully partner up with Campus Watch or partner up with other services you know, the university already operates to ensure that um, it, it provides more than just a food element but a safety element too. 
Okay, cool. Um, this question is for everyone, but we'll start at Will. Um, so basically the same question I asked of the wealthy candidates regarding the fees. Um, they're proposed to go up by 2% today. Um, do you support that? Um, and if you don't, uh, uh, why not? I, I don't support fee increases. I think we've got a central government that's not funding education properly, and I think we need to have strong independent leadership that's going to lobby governments to put more funding into tertiary education so that the costs aren't passed on to the, to the students. I don't think we want user-pays education. I think the skills that we, we gain at university are, are extremely valuable to the country, and I don't think it should be a cost that's being offset onto students. So, and this goes back to what you were saying earlier. You said you and Hugh were going to advocate for lower living costs. Um, so do you think that that is something that is, uh, so not lower living costs, getting more money from the government to pay for your costs on a weekly basis, do you think that is something that is more of a pressing concern to students, um, say compared to the proposal by Labor to make tertiary education free? Like if Labor got their priorities wrong there, or what, what do you think is more important, the living costs or the cost so, of the papers? So from my understanding, that is that the Labor Party hasn't fully announced its tertiary policy, so as far as I'm aware, they are uh, talking about a universal student allowance, so that could come up. Um, right now, how they've announced their policies is they've come out and said they want to support three years of free tertiary education. That's about sort of upskilling people who have lost jobs. Um, so I, I don't feel really comfortable commenting when they, when they haven't released all their policy yet, but I support um, both more government funding into tertiary education and higher um, student living costs being paid through so that's And just to ask you about your view on the department, so even given the implementation of what you want in terms of those policies, if you don't allow the university to charge at a like three to four percent increase each year, it does mean that their only way of funding particular departments outside of the PBRF is student numbers. So do you think that there is a role for the university or students associations in advocating for cross subsidizations to keep particular departments going, or do you think it should just be where the students study? So from my understanding, um, there is a, a cost offset into the humanities department, but to me, the humanities department is the backbone of any university, so I support offsetting um, profits from other sectors into different departments to fund them. Um, I think we need to be funding a diverse curriculum, and if that involves moving money from the, the profits in the health sciences division through to the humanities, then I would support that. Okay, cool, cool. I will pass over to Brent to answer the first question, so back to the fee rises. Um, so fundamentally, I don't agree on fee rises as seen as just a norm that has to happen every single year. Um, I don't think the university should be looking at that as just something they can expect to push through and will always oppose fee rise in that instance. However, it is important to be mindful of a lot of the issues that are, um, that are cre creating this debate. And I do agree with what a lot of the issues are at a national level. And part of that, I think, is we hold an obligation through our membership through NZUSA to efficiently lobby um, Parliament next year as a united student front, not just as an AUSA student association. We need to get all the other student associations on board and get NZUSA talking properly to the political parties and getting our voice heard in their policy making. Um, bring it back, obviously, in, sort of in terms of the um, wider side of it around not increasing fees and humanities and the subsequent offset that causes. Um, I disagree. I don't think, I think it's important we shouldn't see reviews as a negative thing when we're looking at departments. The university has a job to provide the best service it can provide to us. If a university is doing a review, it means it's, try, it's finding a way to ensure its money is spent efficiently and spent better, and therefore we're getting a better education for it. I think all we ask is that it's done fairly and done transparently, and the support is there for the people, and we can have confidence that what comes out of it will be a better degree for everyone. Okay. Um, and in terms of the question I asked Will about increasing living costs or reducing the cost of papers. If you had to pick one, what do you think is the, the more important one? Um, at the moment, the number one issue for students I find is living costs. It's the day-to-day -day costs students have to suffer. Um, the student loan, while it's not great at being as big as it is, um, more, you'll find more students are stressing about the ability to buy food each week, the ability to actually be able to use their heat pump in their flat, than they are about the significant loan they're going to have at the end of it. That, that, although it, it's students have to live in the here and now and have to worry about next week's um, income, so. Cool. Um, Cody, um, oh, yeah, sorry, you just answered the, the first question about, about fees. Uh, yeah, so I 
I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the bigger picture here, okay? Like, the national government, they've been trying to fiscally uh, be conservative and, as a result, less funding for universities. You look at their budget, though, they are, they are funding universities. They are putting money into the system. There's probably just not as much as the university would like. As a result, the university is trying to increase fees as, as much as it can. It used to be 4%, now they can only increase it to a maximum of 3% or maybe 2%. Um, as far as on a day-to-day -day basis goes, can I just get a show of hands here? How many people have actually logged onto the IRD website and have a look at their student loan? Okay, we've got a good sample, like a, a bad sample. It's, it's heavily <laughs> skewed. I reckon, I reckon most students at university, they, they don't know, they don't even know where to go to look at what their student loan is. I reckon most students don't actually think about it on a day-to-day -day or a week-to-week -week basis, what their, their fees that they're paying. In fact, like, the amount of people who fail papers, if, if you... If you don't want to be paying for a university degree, don't pay all papers. Like, that's 700 bucks that you're just throwing away there. It's burning money. So, as far as increases go, I don't think it's that big of an issue. Um, coming back to the living cost, that's more of an issue because that does affect people on the day-to-day. -day. Depending on how much money and depending on whether your parents are supporting you, depending on whether you've got a part-time job, it, it, it concludes, it, it affects what you're living... Uh, what your living standard is basically depending on how much money you get from the government. So that's much more of a bigger issue than I think providing a three year free education because at this point the student loan system it works for its purpose. People can come to university without any, any initial capital, it doesn't matter whether you're from a poor family or a rich family, you can come to university, you can get a loan and you can get your degree and then you can go out and get a better job on average, you only have to earn, I think it's something like $2 more with a $60,000 loan, and over your entire career, earning $2 more than if you hadn't got a university degree, you would pay your loan off. So that means if you, if you didn't go to university and you got a job for $16 an hour, if you go to university, all you need is an $18 hour job, $18 an hour, and you'll pay your, your university degree loan off. So, yeah, I think that's it. Cool, thank you. Um, so, pass the mic back to Will. Has it, have anyone in the audience got a question? Just put your hand up. Okay, I'll come to you guys um, after I've done one question. Um, so, Will, you're saying you want OUSA to be stronger, more independent and decisive. Can you describe what actions that actually entails? Um, so, for effective lobbying, I think we need to be engaging with external stakeholders a lot more so. One issue is that the humanities cuts, we need to be at the forefront talking with the university about the issues and I think if we can't address the issues with the university and with those stakeholders then we have to put public pressure on the institution or the government or the local government and I think uh, it's, a, it's all about just effective campaigns, putting public pressure on these organisations to sort of meet the standards that we sort of want them to meet. So whether that's uh, not cutting humanities funding or, or staff work, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, quick one for Bryn. Well, already mentions what he says is his achievements of this year's exec and his blurb um, about supporting clubs and developing the consulting system. What do you see, Bryn, as your best achievement on this year's exec? Uh, hard to um, isolate any one thing. I very much, on a personal level, I find the work we did at the start of the year going to Wellington and lobbying Parliament directly um, through the select committee process was... Um, hugely rewarding and hugely beneficial to get the student voice out there. As a whole though, I am still very confident that the biggest achievement we have will be um, um, free or substantially um, uh, um, lost my train. We're, we're still campaigning for free flu jazz next year, so I have confidence that that will happen. So I will see that, but I've still got a few months to go and I don't intend on stop working now. Okay, cool. Joe's got a question. In 1997, students uh, stormed the clock tower in protest of the fee increases. Seeing as you are uh, all in, uh, vehemently opposed to the fee increases, um, could you see yourself helping to lead students into similar radical behaviour, or do you think that's not something you agree with? I guess under uh, the circumstances might have been different than as to what the percentage fee increase was, but if it was successive things, or maybe CCTVs being installed in and the surrounding area and pointing at students' flats um, and the code of conduct being extended outside the university, I could totally see myself going to the registry and doing a sit-in with other people that are of similar beliefs. 
I'm a strong advocate that you get the most traction with university by going through the university's processes. Um, work we've done this year around the sexual safety and sexual violence issues, getting pilots put in place for next year. Um, that's only achievable when you show to the university why they should be doing it. If you go out there and complain, the university doesn't care, you're just a small minor thing. But if you go around through their processes and lobby them efficiently and effectively, you will actually get more success than you will, particularly now that we have such a strong working relationship with the university. I think we're much more likely to get what we want going through and, and knowing how to go about it the right way. The reason I handed it over is because I'm trying to look at it from a big picture perspective. I'm not vehemently opposed to um, price or to increases in the cost of study here. One thing I would like to say though is what is the role of OUSA as far as student representation goes? Um, since the voluntary membership come in, OUSA isn't so much a union as it is an association of students. We're not a union that represents the students of the university's political ideals or whatever party or whatever way they swim, whatever they think. We're more of an association that provides services, um, provides the means for students to interact uh, and, and all those and opportunities. Now, as far as um, political involvement goes, we, as, a, as, an, as, a, as, as an executive and as an association, we represent near 20,000 20, students. Now, there's no way you're going to be able to get a clear-cut answer from 20,000 studio students on what the right answer is. So, I think from us, what we go right is dangerous because we represent everyone at the university and if we just take one stance on it, we're only giving a minority or a, a, a portion of the people that we actually represent um, a view. And we're only giving their view to the outside world. But that being said, it is important for us to have a voice. It is important for students to have a voice. And maybe sometimes OUSA is the only opportunity that they can get their voices heard from the outside world. So in that respect, our, our um, organisation is important. Cool. Karen's got a question down the back. Yeah, just a quick question. Well, uh, what's your view on the um, food truck proposal? I'm glad you asked, Karen. Um, so, <laughs> so OUSA is under uh, more financial pressure than ever now that we have a services level agreement with the university that limits the amount of funding we have. Um, I think that we have a responsibility to spend every student dollar wisely, and I don't think throwing $60,000, $70,000 at a food truck is the right sort of service we should be offering students. If there is a demand for food on the student streets at night time, get me a few a barbie and we'll get down there and we'll cook sausages for all the students down there. But I think for now we should focus on uh, effective services rather than focusing on these like glamorous expenditure plans for food trucks that we don't need. Cool. Okay, um, has anyone else got a question? Uh, Talking and, and talking to everyone 
because you never know where the next great idea is going to come from. So following on from what I've already said, um, OUSA participation in political activities, one such thing might be the University Council. I think that definitely students need a voice and whether that's an OUSA uh, executive member on that council or a independently elected member, there needs to be places where students can have their voices heard. And as, a, as, an, as an association that represents 20,000 students, we've got a diverse range of opinions, diverse range of experiences and contexts. We've got to make sure that we at least allow people to have the opportunity to get to say what they want to say. Okay, cool. Um, unless there's any further questions, there is Jared's question. Kia ora everyone, uh, I'm the current Minister of Vice President, uh, these are all my own personal views and do not represent the supporter endorsement from OUSA. Um, just as a, uh, uh, an overview like Britain, well you're the only candidate to free standing from the current executive and I thought just it would be good to, um, I guess, level possibly the biggest criticisms against you both so people know what it's been like this year. Um, so to Will, like one of the biggest things has obviously been your presence in the office. Uh, and why you haven't been present. And to Bryn, I guess there's been a perception that you've been a bit of a negative Nancy in your like, harsh critiques of other executive members and wondering whether or not you'll adopt a more positive approach next year. Um, so that's to, to both of you. So I, I extremely value being on the ground and interacting with students and clubs and societies. And to me, in my role as a recreation officer, that wasn't being said in the OUSA bullpen 10 hours a week, it was being down the recreation centre, being free to meet with clubs, being free to meet with societies, and I felt that that was how I was going to get the most work done. So, while I might not have been in the office as much as I, as I could have been, I felt like I was achieving a lot more being down on the ground, accessible to students. Uh, thank you for the question, Jared. It's an interesting view, I haven't heard that one yet. Um, I am someone who holds people to account. I am quite critical and I am, I don't move around the point. I like to get in there and solve the, the problem as quick as possible. What I do, and in doing that, I'm not a believer of simply criticising things to the point of criticising stuff. Everything I've done this year, even if it is a criticism, it's come with a solution on how I think it should be done better. I think that's what you want from your executive. You want people that aren't afraid to call someone out because they don't agree with what they're saying. You want people to be able to have healthy debate, healthy argument, to try and find the best answer to any particular issue. I make no apologies for doing that this year. Cool, cool. Um, so, I think we will just move into closing statements, unless there are any further questions. Um, I don't have any. So, um, one minute each, um, just to close and say whatever you want, and we'll start with Cody and go down the line. Thank you for listening. <laughs> oh, hey guys, so thank you for turning out. Um, I think you've had a really good chat with uh, some really interesting ideas out there. Um, Obviously the main things I'm pushing for for Education Officer are the greater um, interaction, greater support for the student executive groups um, and the Facebook um, integration of class rep systems to get the system properly working and more robust than it is at the moment. Um, we'd love your voice, I'd love to be your voice on the executive next year. We'd love for you to have a, an executive that is approachable and is out there talking to people. We'd love for you to have an executive that's supporting of initiatives to have um, safer nights on the needed streets and more service available to students. Um, we do want to clarify the food truck is something that will not make a loss. We will not go ahead with it if it is something that is going to be a financial liability for this organisation. Um, we intend to go through all the processes for that. You can have full confidence in that. Um, but we are there to put some ideas out there that are a little different from the norm to solve some of these problems because these problems have been all around for a long time. And it's about finding ways that can solve them in novel and um, interesting ways. So thank you and do remember to vote next week. So being down on the ground this election, I think what we've found is that we want students want strong, independent leadership from their executive. Having run on a large ticket last year, I think we learned um, that how they sort of come when they get on the executive, and I think people don't want that anymore. <coughs> students don't have an appetite for these large tickets running together with their own agendas. I think uh, what students want is a, an independent executive with students at the heart and centre of everything they do. So if you want more frequent rubbish collection, longer library hours and more effective lobbying on issues like the medical school as part of the hospital rebuild. Then vote William Guy for AVP and Hugh Bed for President for a stronger independent voice for OUSA. Cool, thanks guys. I'll leave them around the hall.
there is a forum tomorrow at 1 p.m. for the three presidential candidates, I believe. Uh, so if you want to find out about them, come along there. But other than that, thank you.